Welcome to the second of our LPGA Lunch Lesson Series. I am Cheryl Fish, Senior Manager of the LPGA Partnerships Team, and I'm and am happy to have you all here today with us. I want to first thank one of our partners, NEC, that has provided this web platform, Univerge Blue, that we are using to host these series. This platform allows you to ask questions of our guests, as well as tell us how you're feeling through our emoticons that you can find in the upper left-hand corner, corner, such as likes, hearts, clapping, et cetera. Maybe you can give your, um, our guests a nice round of applause right now. Golf has evolved since its beginning and starting with Tiger Woods, an emphasis has been placed on golfers as athletes, ones who spend their time in the gym or the yoga studio. Today's golfers lift weights, run, and most importantly, train their bodies to handle the stress of a golf swing. In this 30 minute lunch, lunch lesson, we are going to focus on fitness and golf and how incorporating just a few simple stretches can help improve your range of motion, flexibility, and recovery after maybe a grueling round on the links or polishing off that jumbo bucket of balls on the driving range. We're going to give you a few stretches that you can do daily from home as well. Golf is for a lifetime, so we hope that these tips and instruction we share with you today can help you play as long as your body and of course your patience allows it. If you attended the first LPJ lunch lesson, you will recognize Kay Cockrell. Golf Channel analyst and on-course commentator and former LPGA to a professional. Kay, thank you so much for joining us again for these sessions. Our second guest with us today is Karen Flacios Jansen. Karen is an LPGA teaching master professional, a certified personal trainer and Pilates instructor, and was recognized by Golf Digest magazine as one of the top 50 best fitness professionals. If we're going to talk fitness and golf, having Karen here as our expert is a great place to start. Karen, thank you as well for joining us today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. This is fantastic. So Karen, I'm going to start with you. Incorporating fitness into golf doesn't have to be about hitting the gym like some of our amazing athletes that we see on tour these days. For the average golfer, they're, looking to, they're not looking to see how much weight they can bench press or how fast they can run a mile. The focus should be on preparing their body for the strenuous nature of golf and things that they can do to make the golf swing easier. Since the golf swing incorporates all muscles of the body, can you please walk us through some exercises that they can do to make their golf round more enjoyable? Yeah, thanks so much. And you bring up such a good point. You know, professional golfers know the importance of athletic development for golf. And you probably saw last week a lot of the golfers were competing like on that Peloton race bike. You'll see right now a lot of people have time to work out. So you see all these Instagram posts of a lot of these tour players bench pressing a lot of weight, doing a lot of things. And yeah, that's great. But you know, as a recreational golfer, you, you might not have the time to train like that athlete. But I've always said simply adding a few swing drills and exercises into your daily routine can really stretch your game out more. It can help you move better. So I've developed a system. I call it cardio golf. And I use this little short practice club. So this would be good for people at home because it's short so that you can swing inside and you're not going to hit the ceilings or the walls. And you can work on your game a few minutes every day. But today I want to show you um, a little routine that I do before I go play a practice. I recommend it to my students. It's also something that you can do on a daily basis just to keep your muscles golf ready. So um, all you need is a regular golf club for this. And I'm going to take you through it. It takes about five minutes, but with this explanation, it might take a little bit longer. So one of the things that I see recreational golfers, and I, and I don't say amateur because there are a lot of great amateur players that don't, aren't in that recreational, like Kay, she won that, um, the U.S. Women's Amateur, and so they're, they're almost like professional golfers. So a recreational golfer gets out of the car, probably has been sitting at the computer all day or has to drive for an hour. And so they might go to the driving range and they, they rake over ball and they start hitting right away. Well, if you do that right off the bat, your muscles aren't ready to go through the entire range of motion. So you start miss hitting some shots. Well, then you think something's wrong with your swing and then you try to mess with your grip or your swing. And now you've just compounded the problem and you got to the first tee, you're not warmed up. It might take four or five holes before you warm up 
and your form um, gets better, and then by that time your score is already ruined. So if you've just taken the time to warm up the body before you even play or hit balls, you're, you can take your muscles through full range, your swing would be smoother, not so choppy. So I'm going to show you what I do. Now, it's a little different than what um, I see a lot of people do. So one of the first things that I see people do when they get to the driving range is they pull out their club and then they do this action right here. All right, so first of all, this has nothing to do with the golf swing. I cringe. You're not ready to take your shoulders through a stretch. You need to actually warm your muscles up, get that blood flowing so that they can warm up. So you need to do a dynamic warm up before you do the stretching. So there's a three-parter to this little warm-up. And again, it's going to take a little longer to explain to you, but it should only take you know five or six minutes. So first you have to do a dynamic warm-up to get the blood flowing. So what I like to do is just take a club for balance and then just start by doing some hip swings, doing a little hip flexor shot. And the reason I'd start here is because, first of all, this gets the heart rate going, those big muscles. Secondly, these hip flexors and glutes, hamstrings tend to be tight. So, you know, you want to do about 8 to 10 on this side. We're working on balance here. And then switch and then do about 8 to 10 on the other side. So this is a great way to get the heart rate going, the blood and oxygen flowing through your muscles so that you can take them through full range. And then I would actually go a little side flexion right here, side to side lateral, get these inner and outer thighs. This movement, this abduction, adduction, is really important in the golf swing. But we don't do this motion during the day, so you want to activate those muscles. So, you know, do about 8 to 10 repetitions. Then I might do a couple of squats. Squats is a total body exercise. I put my hands here, and then I even get a little stretch in the back, trying to drive those heels, work a little bit on the core. You'll see as I'm talking, this gets my heart rate going. And then what I'll do is called a cross crawl. So it's a great exercise. You hold the club parallel. And then you do a little cross crawl, opposite elbow to opposite knee. So now we're getting a little into the twisting motion of the golf swing. So you do about 8 to 10 repetitions right here. So that's great movement just to get that body going from sitting in the car or the desk all day. It's kind of that bridge between sitting and getting to the driving range. You could even do some bicycle arms forward and backwards like this, maybe even some neck rotators. And you know, if you see a golf fitness professional, it's really important to make sure that you know some of the exercises that you should be doing. All right, so once you're warmed up, my heart's going, so now you can actually add a few stretches in to um, stretch out those chronically tight muscles. Like the calf muscles tend to be tight, so you can do a couple of calf stretches, and you'll notice that my warm-up is standing up because if you go to the driving range, you don't want to have to get on the ground on the wet grass or dirt. I'll do some hamstring stretches like this using the club as balance. And you can be talking to your partner as you're doing this. Then you want to focus a little bit on your shoulders. And I have this actually um, warm-up written down. If you go to cardiogolf.com, you can download this warm-up. All right, from here, then you want to go ahead and rehearse a couple of movements um, that are specific to the golf swing. You want to do the movements that you're going to be doing for the day. So a great exercise is to put this club behind your back like this and then get into your golf posture and practice turning your back to the target, just getting the core warmed up. So as I do this, my head stays nice and centered. So you don't want to do this action here. Because you don't want to look like that with your golf swing. You want to keep your head centered and you really want to twist. So you can do a few core twisters this way. And then you can actually put this behind your shoulders and then rehearse your whole weight shift. So you're warming your body up, but you're also practicing your weight shift. Again, try to look down at where a ball is. Try not to raise up and down. Nice. So, you know, it took a little longer for me to explain. But you can do that whole thing in about five, uh, maybe even three or four minutes, depending on the weather. If it's, if it's cold out, it might take you a little bit longer. So now I feel nice and loose. Now it's easier for me to swing and 
go ahead and make a few practice swings, hit a few shots. I could go to the first tee, and I know that I'm loose. Um, and that's so important to have that mindset that you can take your swing through full range because if you're tight, then you're going to start to manipulate your swing, cause injury or, um, you know, some sort of swing fault. So that's my little routine that I do. And if I don't get a chance to go play or practice, I actually do that at home. Um, and so if you do that every day, you're, you're stretching out, you're getting a little cardio going, and you're rehearsing the movements that you want to be doing for the day. So that's what I do and I recommend for my students. So I'm going to pass it over to Kay, and then she can kind of explain how a professional golfer would incorporate that or even um, maybe do a little bit more. So what do you think, Kay? How, you know, you as a, um, as a real high-level professional golfer and amateur, give us some of the things that you do or you did and you see the other ladies do um, to warm up and get ready. Karen, that, that's an amazing routine. And I, I wish that we all had incorporated that type of routine from day one. I mean, back when I was first learning the game, when I was 15, 16 years old, um, we basically just ran, you just went straight to the golf course and no one was thinking about golf fitness. They were um, just grabbing their sticks and running out. Now um, everything is so fine tuned on the professional side. If you look at the LPGA and PGA professionals, basically they, a, a large majority of them have trainers that they've hired to work with. And they've come up with very intricate workout routines that Karen alluded to. If you go on Instagram, you'll pretty much see any of the top players going through some workout routines and it's pretty intense what they're doing. I mean, plyometrics, heavy weights, um, they're using a lot of bands. The thing I notice these days is there's a lot of cross training, a lot of use of um, bands, of using your own weight, uh, using pulley weights. Um, it's really interesting, big rubber balls that you balance on. Um, so there's, there's an infinite number of exercises that one can do to stretch and strengthen. And I think we're seeing the fruits of that on all the tours and especially the LPGA tour. If you look back to the, to the 2000, you know, if we go back 20 years ago, um, the women now are hitting at an average, driving at an average of 20 yards further. It's almost like 10 yards a decade. Last year, Ann Van Dam was averaging 287 yards on the LPGA Tour, and players were right behind her. Fossey at 282, um, Joanna Clatton at 278. So these players are averaging 270 plus on average. I mean, I've seen them hit at 300, 300 or over 300 when the conditions are right. And a lot of times they're hitting three woods off the tee and maybe they hit it in the rough and they're, they're not getting the rollout that they normally would. But we're seeing much more of a power game. And it's all due to the fact that they're, they're approaching the game like athletes and they're working out really hard. And the biggest thing I see is that the players are very strong in the core. All these exercises are core driven to increase the strength and stability in the central area of your body all the way down to your your glutes your quads your butt and all of those big muscles in that core of the body drive the, the golf swing really and and then the smaller muscles just kind of go along for the ride so um I've even, you know, I'm 55 now and I, I competed the last couple of years in the U.S. Senior Women's Open. So I spent a little more time thinking about how I need to prepare my body and my body is different than your body is different than Karen's body. And we all have our own strengths and weaknesses. I've had off and on back problems through the years, which I'm sure a lot of you have experienced as well through your life. It seems like us as humans all have a predisposition to back issues. And I think that all the little things we do fundamentally incorrect throughout the day kind of lead us to this potential back problem. And then you throw in golf and that can really exacerbate it. So a lot of um, the work I do, I do Pilates and I know Karen instructs, uh, is an, a Pilates instructor as well, because I, there's a lot of great core work with Pilates and stretching. So you combine strength and stretching. And then I do work with uh, weights and 
a lot of things that I can do just in the hotel room, because when I travel as a, as a commentator, I don't always have time or the inclination to go to a gym. And even the hotel gyms are so, sometimes less than satisfactory. So I come up with a routine, routine that I can do in my hotel room. And I'm actually going to incorporate a lot of those exercises that Karen just showed us um, when I go out to play, because those, those are great ideas for what you can do on the driving range. But I'm going to show you a couple of um, things. Let me tilt this down that I do because of my back. One of the first things I do when I get when I get up in the morning is I go basically into a child's pose. And this is, to me is the universal stretch of calming. And it starts slowly working, uh, waking up my lower back. And if you don't, if you can't go down very far, you might only go this far. And slowly just trying to reach your hands out until you get all the way down into this, into that full child's pose. And then you can move your hands to the left and to the right to try to stretch each side out a little bit more. This, this, I practically get out of bed and go right onto the ground and do a child's pose. Then um, another great exercise is to try to get some, um, is to try to get some rotation in your upper back, the thoracic spine. So doing these, these side rotations on the ground um, on both sides is wonderful. I usually do these in the morning and I also do them again in the evening because whether or not if I play golf, having mobility in your upper back is really important. Another exercise that I love is the same kind of thing. You put one hand um, behind your back on the, flat, the small of your back and then you, you stabilize your lower back and you rotate up and breathing the whole time. So this again, you're keeping your lower body stable and your upper body is giving a nice rotation. I have a lot of some weakness and stiffness in my upper back and that kind of ties in and manifests into the lower back. So the more your upper back can have flexibility, the better. Um, if you're out on the golf course and you're playing and you feel like your lower back, your lower back gets a little stiff, you can just hang on to the golf cart or go over to a bench and you can simulate that lower back sort of child's pose stretch by holding on to something and really getting into the lower back. I've done this several times when I'm out on the golf course when I feel like my back is getting a little tight and I just go over and I stretch it out and it feels so good. And you can do that on the tee, you know, basically as you're getting ready um, before you're hitting your next shot. Another, one other of my go-to exercises, again, you could do this, you could do this one in the office while you're at work. You could do this on the airplane. I've actually done this one on the airplane when I'm um, on a long flight. It's that figure, figure four stretch where you cross, let me see if I can get myself where you can see me just a little bit better. Cross one leg over the other, sit up very straight, press your knee down and just gently hinge forward. A great exercise for your outer glute, outer hip area. You can just kind of lean into it. Then you do this on both sides, but what I do is I, then I just cross my leg over and do a, a gentle stretch. This is a great exercise to do out on the golf course. As I said, if you feel like your back's getting a little tight or do plan on doing this a couple times throughout the day when you're at the office, simply bring that leg over, hinge forward. Oh my goodness, this stretch along the, um, the hips and the lower back are, is just fantastic. And then, and then turn and rotate. Ooh, and I just got a nice pop in my upper back. So those are a couple of my go-tos that I literally do every single day and it's important for everybody to you know to figure out the exercises that work for you again you can follow Karen go online and and check out some of the exercises that a lot of the women do on tour Morgan Pressel is really into yoga she's found that that it's a way for her to find her center and it's also a great strength building exercise as well so Young Yu, she does a lot of Pilates and you can go onto her site and see some of the Pilates moves that she's doing. So 
it's really interesting, Karen, how there's such a wide variety of exercises and there's so much information at our fingertips, but it's a matter of finding out what's what's best for you. And you really put a, a wonderful pre-shot routine or pre-game routine out there for all of us. So you brought up really two great points that I want to emphasize. The first one is, notice how Kate, she has something that she does every day. So I always tell people, it would be better for you to practice or do one fitness exercise a little bit every day, day than to wait until you have two or three hours to work out because that doesn't work. So incorporate something simple like what Kay was just showing us. The second thing is that you, you brought up is how you need to find out what exercises are good for yourself, not for what other people are doing. So if you go to any golf fitness professional, they would start you out with a basic golf fitness screen to take you through and see where your range of motion is for every muscle. You see, if you start doing like squats, for example, with big heavy weights, well, if you have a low back issue, you are gonna injure yourself more. Let's say you do some flexibility exercises where women love flexibility exercises, but you might need to do some stability exercises for your core to be tighter. So you need to find out what exercises are good for you also um, okay, as you know, we have imbalances because we're always swinging one direction. So one side's tighter, stronger than the other side. So you might have to do more repetitions on the other side to balance yourself out. So those two points that you brought up are brilliant. Something every day and then make sure you find the exercises that are appropriate for your level. And, and Karen, um, I'm not a, a, a professional teacher like you are, but just in my simple observations of going to the driving range. I live in San Francisco and I'm lucky enough to to play at the Olympic Club and we have a large number of members that come in all shapes and sizes and when I when I look across the range one thing I really see that people have in common and I think it happens as we age is they start losing strength in their legs and their hips and their and their derriere for for a better word and they end up swinging and maybe karen you could speak to this as well they end up losing their legs in the swing they're not even using them at all in the over the upper body ends up taking over and i think it's it's an issue not only in golf but just in life you really have to pay attention to doing lower body exercises to keep your legs strong so you can keep moving in this world and keep walking and enjoying life and staying healthy. That's a, that's a great point and it kind of segues into my program if you don't mind. Shameless plug for my cardio golf program. So I have this program called Cardio Golf and this I call this the slope. It's a regular fitness step but you can see it's curved like a fairway so we can rehearse those uphill and downhill lies but because in nature you're never walking on a completely flat lie cage you know the curvature acts as stability, so it works your core more than just doing exercises on a flat surface. So you can get this cardio golf slope and shorty club, and you can rehearse your back swing. You can do your down swing if you don't have a lot of area. And so I incorporate upper and lower body exercises, but you, have, you make such a great point. Um, where I see people go wrong is that they don't have really like a full um, assessment of what they need to work on, so they work on what they like most flexibility, upper body exercises. So like you said, we need to work on the glutes, the hamstrings, the, the core, things like that. So if you have some sort of thing that you can do at home, and especially during these times where we can't go to the gym anymore, and do a few minutes every day, you can build that muscle back up, get your power back. Yeah, it's it's, and it could be even something as simple as, um, you know, just even if you're even if you're um, doing Zoom calls and you've got a little break, you can just you know gently sit down into your chair and up, and down into your chair and back up and and breathe. And you're getting a little bit of you know you're starting to work your butt, you're starting to work your core, and you're getting your heart rate up a little. Even if you did ten or twelve of those a couple times a day, and and anything to just stay active. Uh, a lot of times when I'm waiting in line, I just stand on one leg and I lift the, I lift my left leg up and I, I just stand perched on my right leg balancing um, for like 25, 30 seconds. And then I switch to the other side and no one would even know I'm doing it. I'm barely holding my leg up. 
but again, I'm, I'm sort of building some strength in my leg and I'm building balance. And, and if you kind of look at life as a grand exercise, try to make everything you do an exercise. That's okay, great. Karen, yeah. we actually have a couple questions and I know you, I, I know we talked about this before our webinar even started that we're, we're barely touching the surface, I think, of golf and fitness. So it may be one where we have to definitely come back to it at a, at a later series. Um, but we do have a couple questions for the from the audience, so I want to make sure that we do get them to you. So, um, Karen, we've talked about stretching uh, before the round. Are there one or two quickly that you can talk about that they should do after their round that's going to help them on the recovery side after their play? Yes, that's a, that's a great point. And since we spend so much time hunched over in flexion with the golf swing, you want to do exercises that emphasize extension, extension in your thoracic spine, extension in your hips and back. So I don't know if you can see me if I get down on the floor. But you want to do anything that you can to emphasize the extension, like swimmers, swan, or cobra exercises because we've spent that whole time hunched over so then you want to open your chest and back up so extension exercises after the round are really good to um, like bring your alignment back together yeah we also in your 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 warm-up routine you know we obviously worked on using just a general club that you have in your bag and I know we've all seen them out there in training aids, um, weighted clubs to help you stretch and warm up. Is that something that is, is still the norm? Is it something that's still recommended or is there a con to it? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, weighted clubs are good. First of all, uh, you want to make sure that you have good swing, swing technique, but you want to vary it. So you actually, if you're uh, working out for speed, you actually want to maybe do a few swings with a weighted club and then switch over to a very light club and swing faster, you want to vary it. You don't always want to swing with the heavy club because that's going to slow you down. To get club head speed, as Kay can tell you, those girls swing as fast as they can, so it's, you actually get more club head speed with something lighter than something heavier. Um, and a, a weighted club would be good if you were to flip it around and maybe take opposite swings just to uh, balance out your muscles. Yeah, that's Ladies a really good point. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you know, I think for um, all of you in the audience, I know we also had a question of, are we able gonna um, be able to find some of these tips and stretches after today's webinar? And we will. Um, one of the, the pros of you guys registering and logging in with us is that we are able to communicate with you afterward. So we will be able to share these wonderful stretches and fitness tips from Karen through her cardio golf. So you'll see that coming from us shortly. Um, and I think the key for this, because we are talking about stretches and exercises that are that we need to be aware of for our body. And I think the most important thing is that we do need to consult with an expert on, uh, you know, your fitness expert, your medical expert, because while these are all great for the masses, we want to ensure that you're safe doing them and that you are given clearance to do some of these, especially some of those yoga poses, which are can get advanced. So I think that's very important is to talk to your medical expert on some of them before you go right into a yoga routine or into a yoga class somewhere. Um, I think, you know, what the LPGA's mission has been for 70 years is to empower, inspire, and transform the lives of girls and young women through the game of golf. And we want to share with you this little message while we leave you today. So I'm going to share our newest drive on story. Ladies, thank you both for joining us. For so many players, this is a dream, but I was so scared. I was scared of being away from my parents. I was scared because I couldn't speak any English. Most of all, I was scared of doing it all alone. With the support of my family and friends, I was able to pursue my biggest dream. Just being a part of it made me feel like I could take on anything. That's a great video and so such perfect timing for it. Um, we do want to thank you all for joining us today. And as a thank you to both Kay and Karen, 
we do want to let you all know that we are going to donate to a wonderful cause, a cause that um, for our organization is very dear to our hearts, and that is the Marilyn Smith Scholarship Program, so that we can continue to empower young girls all over the world to join this wonderful game and to trace the, chase their dreams. Thank you for joining us. And if everyone can just hold on as we end the webinar, we do have a short survey we would love for you to fill out. Once again, thank you and have a wonderful day. Thanks for having us.